Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here on the foxhole. I'm going to go ahead and pop in here and take a look at the map. Let's get an overview on what's happening in the war. I haven't done a video in a little while. I've been doing a lot of streaming here, but we're going to try something a little different here. I tested this out on the stream once before, and I haven't gotten around to doing a nice uh, video on this, and I'm ready to get back into the swing of things. All right, so what I want to do now is more of an overview of the war. Right now, looking at all the maps, we can see that, first of all, I'm thinking this is these maps are closed off due to redesign. So they're going to be changing that up a good bit. I'm interested in seeing how that's going to come out. But, uh, you know, we're limited to the maps now. At the current state of the war, this is early war. Um, I don't, we haven't even gotten sledges yet, or at least of last night when I was uh, streaming last night, we didn't have te uh, sledges. We can see the progression of the war. For the most part, it looks like the wardens have the majority space here, pushing our way into the south. I'm with the warden clan, but I'm going to be speaking of this in a neutral, or I'll try to speak of it in a neutral, uh, from a neutral standpoint. We're going to be looking in Deadlands here. Deadlands looks as though the Colonials are trying to push back. We see that they're popping into Deadlands. We can see that the Colonials are trying to push back. Looking here, it looks as though they may have taken a fob here and pushing their way north. They have a nice town hall here in the Brine Glen. That looks pretty interesting. I'd like to get down there and see exactly what's happening. Uh, there appears to be only a few radio towers along this uh, front coming from the warden side. I'm very interested in why that is. Maybe, you know, night capping. They may have knocked down most of the other towers in the area. Or maybe they're just not displayed here on this map. But uh, the Deadlands look like an interesting area. I'd like to get down there on the ground and uh, give us a very close up on what's happening down there so we can get some uh, real time progression down there. Also, the Colonials are pushing north here on the uh, Lynn of Mercy. Now, this is an interesting push because if you see here, they're sort of piercing the uh, west, I mean, the, uh, the east side of the map, which is, it's got to be brutal because the only way around here seems as though they went across this bridge to Merciful Strait. And, uh, mm. I can just imagine how horrible that must have been. How they got this far up. I mean, that fort's totally... If anybody's spawning on that fort, they're in nightmare zone right now. Yeah, so I don't see any other routes forward, especially just being stuck on this uh, island right here. It's a fairly good defensive position, but you're going to be attacked from multiple different sides. And you can see they got a fort here in the back. Apparently, uh, this fort and this FOB has been taken down. I'm sure these two forts right here, which, I mean, you can tell these, these were efforts that were done at nighttime and didn't have any logistic support behind them, and that's why they're going to fall. But maybe we'll pop down in there and take a look at that as well. I also want to see what's going on over here. Again, uh, may have not had enough logistic support, maybe not enough players backing it, and it was just you know, run in there and take it. No real uh, idea as to why we're taking it or anything. And oh, well, look back here. We got another fort down back here. This one just may not have been built up after being taken down. So uh, that's pretty interesting right there as well. I want to see what's going on. Why the wardens haven't uh, jumped on that. Let's go ahead and pan our way right across here. And we're looking to Endless Shore where the Collies have... <laughs> Yeah, they just have a single fort there. And again, why that haven't been changed over, I, I don't know. Um, I'm guessing the populations are back up. You know, it's early morning on my end. It's about uh, it's about 10.30 a.m. So uh, right now the pop should be pretty high. That should have been converted back over almost immediately. It, it is unsupported on all sides, so it, no reason to leave that like that. Uh, very interesting. The Drowned Veil looks pretty good as well. We can see here the Collies are definitely making an eastern push. They appear to be fairly stalled down here on this uh, western front within the Drowned Veil. 
but they got plenty of open path to uh, spread out and it appears to only be forts in this area so there's not really much that'll stop them if they were to go west I, that seems to be the tactic that i would use i would spread out west to here and perform some sort of flanking here on the town hall probably take that you know they got plenty of support coming in out of here down in the uh, umbro let's look and see if they have a manufacturing oh they do okay so they can manufacture and they got plenty of resources here if you look here tons of salvage in there you even got well um, i doubt they have sledges yet but you know tons of resources down there in umbro uh if i were the wardens after i cleaned up the drowned veil because that would i mean you'd have to want to secure your flanks first you know clean clean up deadlands as well because you got to take them all out of deadlands i would also want to secure drowned veil to make sure that that flanks pretty good and, uh, and i think it'll be easier to push down and on the collies down here in the western area of the Drowned Vale. They'll have enough support coming out of Endless where they can actually clean up that right side as well, this eastern front of the Drowned. But uh, I'll be wanting to get down here to Umbriel because that's a lot of resources. One of the things that I don't think that people think about whenever they're doing these different pushes on the front line is uh, I don't think they think about the resources. They just want to take a new zone, you know. I just want to go over here and take that, you know. So. If I were looking over here at uh, Lockmore, it didn't have as much resources. Um, I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. I'd want to take it away from the colleagues to be taking it. But as a priority, first of all, we got to secure Drown Vale. That's a lot of resources in there. I mean, you got your sulfur in there. You got a nice, uh, what's that, salvage mine over there. Should have some oil in there too, right? Don't they have oil in there? With the salvage mine down there. Yeah, so just two salvage mines. I thought they had oil in here. Sulfur mines. Oh, yeah, with those sulfur. But there we go. There's the oil. Yeah, so they got the oil. You got some lots of sulfur mines in there. Um, yeah, I'd definitely be trying to get this drowned veil back because those are good resources. You want those nice and early. Uh, doesn't appear to have any manufacturing in here, though, which makes it a little rough because that means everything is going to have to be bussed back to probably... Uh, Deadlands. Does Deadlands have manufacturing? Doubt it. I don't see any in here. No, so it'd probably have to be bussed back to uh, Viper, which sucks. I'm looking. Oh, no, no. Hollow has a uh, Hollow has a uh, um, manufacturing so you can take it back there. Yeah, so you can bust it back to Hollow. That's not too too far of a, a, a trick back. But uh, Umbrill that has manufacturing and a ton of resources. I would probably not manufacture here except for items like just raw B mats that are going to be used on the front. So I would not set this up like it's going to be a major manufacturing. Any resources gathered here that is not going to be used directly on the front, I'd probably bust them back to somewhere safer where uh, you can produce like your Howie shells and things like that. But I wouldn't be producing any large scale uh, late war ammunition and weapons and things like that down here unless uh, like I mentioned they're going to be used immediately like they're, they're going to go straight from here to wherever the front is on this map or, or once you got the map cleaned out and uh, you get all these resources well defended that's another thing I don't see very much of you know I see people go scatter defenses all down the roads going to places but they leave the resource itself completely wide open when you want to keep all your your scrappers protected you want to drop an FOB on each of these nodes keep a crane there with a, a CV and stock the FOB with just a few shirts and uh, a couple of basic rifles and ammunition you know s small stuff to keep them well defended and bring them some mats so that they can build some defenses around there throw some U carts in there as well to uh, get them all active and that way whenever logic gets down there and gets to working in those zones well, if a guy does come running around, you know, the partisans come running around trying to just wreck the scene, well, they're going to run into some defenses. So that's the kind of thing I'd be trying to do. But, uh, hey, who am I, huh? So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump down into one of these maps here real quick. I'm probably going to jump down into the Deadlands first because this looks kind of interesting down here. And after we jump into the dead, Deadlands, I think we're probably going to run over here to the Land of Mercy. And then I'll take another trip over here at Endless. And just, you know, I really want to know why that single fort 
is uh, just lying there. So we're going to go into the Deadlands first and uh, check things out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're down here in the Deadlands now, and we're over at Callahan's boot on the front. The bridge is down. Uh, the area looks a little sloppy. Just, you know, defense is sort of uh, scattered around. I'd really like to have that harvester this early in the game. As you can hear, there's some gunfire over here. we got an engineer building. I'll go ahead and give you a good shot of the bridge right now where the boys are fighting at. I'll try to peek across, but oh, I don't have any binos, so it's going to be very difficult to really give you that uh, that view. Something I like to have, um, I guess if you were to be like a press corpse member or whatever, if you're going to play neutral, I guess you could have like a, a simple kit where you just only have like binos or whatever, so you can actually get a good view on the war. So uh, let's go ahead and run across here. Oh, there is a guy over here. Look at that. There's a collie right there on the bridge. We saw him just a few seconds ago. I don't want to get shot, so I'm going to go ahead and walk away from this area. Take another look around. See what's happening over here. Oh. Okay. So the war, as far as I can see it here on Callahan's, uh, is just a rush to build in the center of the road. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try to get my hands on some binos. I'll look around for it and uh, try to find some somewhere. That way I can have a little better view. Uh, I think this rifle should give you some sort of better view, so I'll try that. Okay, yeah, so this does give me a little bit better view here. So let's hop in this box here and try to get some... Get a better angle on the war. Turn off the overlay here and just try to peek out there a little bit and see what we got here. Just a regular bridge stalemate. Nothing too spectacular going on here. Try to get a good view over that bridge as well. Better turn my overlay on so I can see. Alright. So we got some guys trying to make it across the bridge over here. Not much else. You can see the uh, backpacks down here where uh, the fighting has been going on. And let's just see what happens with that gentleman there. All right. He appears to be, uh, <laughs> he appears to be uh, stuck. Oh, we got another gentleman joining him over there. Let's, uh, let's just watch and see what happens here for a bit. I wish I had some binos instead of just having to use this rifle, but it's what we got. I turned off the VoIP so that way I don't get uh, bombarded with all the bunch of push, push, run, do all this. Okay. So not much, just your regular bridge stalemate. I'm going to go over there and try to get a good peek at what's happening just beyond the point. So again, we're right down here at the bridge on Callahan's boot. And we're looking across. So let's... Uh, Let's see if we go. Oh, gas. Never mind. Yeah, lots of gas being thrown there. We got more guys going across. Oh, there we go. There it is. There it is. Looks like I just took a quick shot. Let me just uh, duck it down right there. And... From what it looks like, none of these guys decided to bring medical. <laughs> so, uh, great idea when you're pushing. Oh, there we go. We got one guy that brought some medical. One guy. There you go. See, that guy's a good guy right there. 
he understands on what it takes being versatile. When you're pushing into an area like this where you know you don't have any sort of footing, you, you just got to make do with what you got. It's always a good idea to bring some medical. If everybody just brings a first aid or at least, you know, communicate that a few should bring a first aid, it'll work out a little bit better for you. I obviously always run around with some medical, but I'm not here to help everybody. I'm just kind of reporting on the war. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go check out another front. We're down here at the abandoned ward. And we're going to take a look at this bridge and see what's going on down here. You can tell some fighting is going on. I think I found out what these reds are. Those are just dying defenses. So it's not any sort of nuke or anything. I guess if the enemy attacks a defense and kills it, it'll turn red or whatever. There's a little bit of lag in the server right now. And I guess because of the pop. Pop is short for population, if, just in case you didn't know. So these cheeky devils down here at the abandoned ward have... Uh, begin abusing the storage crates using them pretty much like tier two walls as you can see here this is a very cheap technique one i'm not fond of but i mean it's in the game now and it's what'll happen so let's go ahead and pull out our rifle and see what we can see just beyond this point here um the bridge is up which means that at any moment fighting can happen here we see a couple bags down on the uh, ground down there and let's try to do a little rotating here so we can sort of scrub across this area aha uh -huh. we got a guy right there who's probably gonna put a shot on us but I'm not gonna worry about him for now so uh, yeah we got this soldier right here Let's see if we can get some... Uh, oh, whoa, wait a minute. We got this guy down there. Let's see if we can go ahead and get some uh, words from the soldiers on the ground down here. Let's turn the chat back on just for a moment and see what's happening. Oh, wait a minute. They're going across. And there are no healers here, no medics. So they're just doing what they're doing. Let's just see what we can see there. Oh, there looks to be more soldiers... All right, so he may have spotted that one soldier that was in the sidelines there. Yep, so they have spotted him. Hmm. I'm trying to see if I can get some eyes in on that guy as well. Let's try to reposition myself a little bit and try to see a take the overlay off really quick and see what we can find. Oh, there you go. <laughs> He has dropped into the water and is doomed. He is swimming and he has been shot in the water dead. Okay, so that guy down there is playing music. He did realize there were no ladders there, on. right? All right, I think it's this guy that was just playing the music, right? Who are... I'm about to move these f crates. They're annoying. All right, so we hear some objections to the cheeky... Uh, technique the technique of using the crates over here yeah I really don't like this technique either I, I think that this is an abuse um, of the assets I know that there's no way to really stop it right now because once they're in the game people are gonna do what they're gonna do but I I personally no don't don't do this this is bad it contributes to cluster and now somebody has to go out of their way to move all this crap so yeah so that's abandoned ward this is what we got going on down here at the ward i'm just going to stay out of the street i was over here down at liberation wasn't much going on down there at liberation nobody's talking nobody's really defending that area or anything uh, so i don't maybe they are they're just probably down in this area somewhere i don't know i just couldn't find anybody so i left the area rather than going down there and getting shot so that's Abandoned War down here in the Deadlands. Alright, so now, yeah, we're going to head on over to Endless Shore. I'm not interested in the Drown Veil vale right now, and it doesn't appear to be anybody there doing anything. Or if they are, they just haven't built anything. Maybe there's no logistic support. This is where the ham seems to be happening right here. Well, the mayhem. 
So let's get on down there to the iron junction. Over an endless, which is going to be a nice trek. So uh, we're going to make sure we got plenty of fuel and we're going to head out. All right, so we're here in, uh, was this abandoned ward? I think it is. No, endless shore. We're in endless shore. And we're going to set our spawns back here because I've checked ahead. You can see there's some attacks going around these boys. So uh, there's some flanks happening. I want to go ahead and set my spawn in this area and then we'll make our way right down here to the front and see what's happening with the boys down there. Oh, need a ride? Hop on. All right, you might want to set your spawn down here, buddy, because <laughs> we're very close. You're welcome, friend. All right, so let's park the bike somewhere safe. Uh, I don't think this place has many. Oh, it does. There we go. Spawn there. Okay. So this is my layout right now. Now I have the medical. If I get shot and go down, I'm going to be dropping my medical so somebody can get me back up. So that's why I have the medical. And I got rid of the rifle because, uh, you know, I'm not going to be engaging the enemy directly. And I'm going in the wrong area, so I need to be going west, southwest. So we let's, oh, here we go. Got some action somewhere around here. Oh. Some accidental discharge going on over here. All right, so let's go ahead and head on down into this area and see what's happening. Total cluster F worth of defense. Like, look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about right here. What do you hope to accomplish with this? Really? Uh, you know, this is why I wish we could just, you know, stockpile our own defenses where nobody else can touch them. Because when you just do Lodgy all night, you grunt. Let me just go ahead and mute right now because... I'm not going to be dealing with that right now. Yeah, when you do Lodgy all night and you you work on gathering all these resources, this is what happens to them. <laughs> you know, you can't get anything done. You just can't. So I'd much rather work with a group of people who know what they're doing, who have engineers and are willing to actually use defenses somewhat appropriately. All right, so now let's get out here on the war front and see what's happening. Looks like we got some gas being thrown. Ooh, the boys are getting blown up. So I'm going to show you on the map where we are right down here. And there's lots of action. Let's take the overlay off so that way we can uh, get a much cleaner view of the war. And I'll turn Voight back on in just a moment here right now. And I just want to get a view on this without interruption from uh so we got some gas being thrown down there all right so there doesn't appear i hear somebody building or repairing something oh there we go that's it right there so we got some more sandbags grenade looks like it fell in that area no okay All right, so let's see. A lot of action in the bush over there. It's pretty dark. Since this is night, I'll turn the game up. Turn the overlay off again. All right, hopefully it's a little easier to see now. All right, so one of the things that uh, I want to talk to you about when you're engineering on the front line, think of your structures that you're building as think of the war like water, right? It's very fluid. It can 
go in any direction at any time. Your defenses need to be built like a container to hold back that water, right? To con if not to hold it back, just to control the flow of it. You understand? So you, just spamming stuff down still allows for numerous gaps and it's just inefficient. It's just a very inefficient use of resources. So uh, right now and I'm looking at how the defenses are, you know, sloppily just sort of, look at this. What, you know, I, I swear this just makes me disgusted with people sometimes. It, it's why it's so hard to do Lodgy, man. You know when you work hard all night, what's going to happen with those resources. I'm telling you. But enough complaining, let's get back into the war here. Uh, things seem to be going pretty good. They uh, seem to be trying to take down enemy defenses be before moving in. And I'm looking at the flags on those defenses. Those are full flags, so there must be a fob somewhere around here. Be best if we get another radio tower up so we can get eyes in on this area a little bit better. Hmm. Are these enemy defenses over here? No, those must be friendly. Yeah, it's just hard to see the flags on them. Those are friendly. All right, yeah. Now would be a good time to get into the tower up because uh, let's pull the map up real quick. Yeah, we got no eyes in the area and the first thing you'd want to do is spot that fob. Maybe it's coming from the town hall, but that looks like, oh, well, that's a fort, so no, it ain't that. There's got to be a uh, enemy fob somewhere around here powering those defenses. So what I'll do is uh, I'll try to get a little bit closer here. Hopefully I don't get shot. Oh, there we go. Lots of enemy fire coming in off the bush. Oh, there we go. Enemies now moving in. I'll try to hide myself over in this area a little bit. Just kind of crouch there. I saw a guy behind me. There we go. Yeah, so let's just kind of hide there and see what's going on. All right. Got some engagement over here. Southeast direction. Enemies building more defenses out there. We got walls, so that means the fob is back there somewhere. That's where the fob is. Now, if I were talking to them, I'd report it to them, but I pretty much know what kind of people that are on the field right now. It's probably just a bunch of partisans. They don't give a damn about the intel. They just want to shoot the gun. <laughs> but, you know, I'll give them the credit. I'll give them some credit. Let me let me just pop, put the, uh, the Voight back on. And let's hear what kind of conversations going on down here on the front. So, man, how's the war? Anybody got? Like the rubber banding is just not helpful at all. Ah, so you're saying that there's some uh, server issues? Uh, yeah, they've been having it for like six hours now. Sounds good. All right, so is there any sort of uh, hierarchy here? Like, is there anybody actually in control guiding this flow of men to the front line or just everybody's just uh, doing I, their own thing? I think everyone just can't do their own thing. Uh, we're pushing up. So is anybody going to take initiative down here and uh, sort of kind of try to help control this flow? Oh, your guys are doing a good job, just like, pushing up. And there's some grenades right here on the ground. Enemy southeast, southeast. Alright, so things are going, uh... They're going. <laughs> move, move, move. <laughs> They're going. Let me just get somewhere safe. I'm gonna just pop into a... Oh, yeah. When I was... Alright, so uh, let me turn the void back off for just a moment here. Um... Yeah, when I was uh, driving a motorcycle down here, yeah, I know what he means about the rubber banding. Like, it was the worst experience driving to get here. 
across all the maps. It was like this real herky jerky nonsense. Oh, oh, is that pop? No, that's not the pop there. But uh, I'm trying to find that fob. It's somewhere around here. I'm guessing it's back this way because that's where the fences and everything are. So as we get a little closer, looks like we're hitting that uh, CV there. Yeah. All right, so the enemy's got somebody. Oh, there we go, HMG right there. All right. Lots of grenade spam. You saw it just now, just lots of grenade spam. They're just tossing, and that's the most effective technique in the game right now. Pure meta. Grenade spam, I'm telling you. Another reason that uh, I take breaks from this game. <laughs> Cheap techniques like that. Where you can just hang in the back and just lob like 30 grenades non-stop. Nothing to stop you at all. Uh, you really just want to take a break when that happens. Ooh, lots of machine gun fire here. So I want to stay back. So down here, the war is very interesting. There's lots of movement down here. So I guess if you're uh, looking for a place to come and fight, this is the place. Let me go ahead and pop back in. Ah, look, we got eyes down, so we're pushing down. Very good. We got a CV going to go do something over here. Um, okay. Got something happening over there. Let's just see what we can see in this area. Alright, so it's, it's dark, so you can't really see much, but I'll, I'll duck down right here and try to see what I can find. Alright, not really much. I don't want to go any further because there are gorillas out there, and I don't want to run into that. All those defenses right there are online. Still can't get eyes on that fob just yet. But I'm getting closer. Oh, that's the fort. So the fort's what they're using, huh? Okay. Ooh. Nice pattern of defenses down there, but uh, it's going to go down. Yeah, those defenses are going to go down. They're just basic foxies. So you can just uh, use some concentrated fire with basic rifles and just knock a nice hole through there. Make your way over to the fort and uh, dump eight cheese all over the thing. Yeah, clean it up real easy. Oh, jeez. Grenade spam. <laughs> yep. Good thing I popped. Oh, look at that. Another grenade right there, right? Is it, Oh, was that debris from the last grenade? Yeah. Yeah, see, so they're just running in, chucking grenades right now. It's not really a... Alright, so... Uh... I think we've covered the war pretty good so far. I think we've seen exactly what's happening. Heard from the men on the field. They got some issues with rubber banding. Uh, really no structure or order. Just men doing as they usually do. It's foxhole. There's a lot of uh, individuality going on down here. No, no hierarchy at the moment. So, uh, be the perfect time to start up a, a group you know, a clan, and uh, actually organize this movement. I think it'd be fantastic. I'm not going to be doing that today, though. I'm, ju I'm just reporting right now. And, oh, just took a round. Yeah, that's another thing. You saw how I just took that bullet right there? I've been doing some testing. And in my testing, it's, I'll, I'll make another video on that. I'll make another combat briefing video on that because I'm still wondering what's going on with that. Like, it shows from the game information that the rifle does the same amount of damage no matter the distance. But that's clearly not the truth. You saw I just got shot and didn't even get hurt. And I've done that to people numerous times. I've shot them at distances with rifles and... It seemed like it had no effect on them at all, other than showing me that they've been shot. Like, you see, like, a little blood spring from their body, but there was really no, uh... You see all those grenades going off? Look at that. How can you actually fight in all that? Non-stop grenade spam, man. They're just chucking grenades. Oh, wow. 
I just got hit. Okay. <laughs> so let me just fall back here. Oh, wait a minute. We got some uh we got some attacks coming. I'm being treated. Very good. Thank goodness somebody's actually deciding to treat me. I'm glad we got some medics out here. Very good. I guess you gotta spread these men out. Get to get the uh And see, building these pillboxes, let, let me just educate for just a moment. Remember what I said about containing the war, like controlling the flow of the war. Building a pillbox in an open area just isn't helpful. All right. Pillbox have a narrow view that it will cover. A foxhole is an omnidirectional defense so it will shoot in a circle around it so when you're in an open field obviously the foxhole is the best bet it's going to cover a larger perimeter the soldier can obviously hop inside of it and also cover a larger perimeter whereas if you're in this pillbox right now and if i had a rifle i would only be able to shoot in like a small cone in front of the pillbox like right here but if I were in a foxhole, I can actually spin around and shoot all around the foxhole. You understand? I don't have to rely on the foxhole AI itself. I could actually engage the enemy no matter what direction they're in. But with these pillboxes, it's just a waste of materials here. Because once the enemy gets on the side of that pillbox, what's going to protect you? You know, the pillbox isn't going to protect you anymore. There, you know, so it those are really good for bottlenecks. But in an open field, it's a it's not a good idea to do it i'm not in the educating mood right now and of kind of teaching these guys because once they're caught in the war i mean ears closed they're just doing whatever they can they got resources in their hand they're just going to do something with them so uh i'm going to continue reporting covering the war as best i can looks like uh is that a friendly defense down there in the corner looks like it Again, I don't know what it's covering. Uh, you know, it just tch, people just doing things. You know, they they got a hold of some B mats. They're gonna put them down any way they can. But so far, it looks like a lot of fun to be had down here. Aside from the rubber banding and the grenade spam which is normal in this game if you played any time on the front lines you know grenades fall like rain a couple trucks uh this right here is also not welcomed building in the road like this not welcomed you're you're, you're cutting off your own logistics think about it you're still pushing forward aren't you so why in the hell are you building in the road? These type of structures right here, by the way, this little nice box structure that they're building. Grenade spam is the most effective technique. Where's the best place to throw a grenade? In this box, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the best place to throw a grenade. You know why? Because everybody somehow thinks it's safe in there. They Think about it. It's not that high. So a grenade will land in there with ease. And there's a good chance there's going to be boxes placed in there and soldiers hiding in there. So it's just like playing basketball. This is the hoop. This is the goal. You're just going to chuck a grenade in there, blow up everybody that's in there, as well as any resources that are in there. And bada bing, you win. And building this in the road, bad, you know, just all of this is just bad idea. All of that. You're lodging. Now when you go forward, now when you try to go forward toward that uh, fob up there to continue uh, pushing, you're lodging. Well, with the sandbags, they can just run them over. Don't get me wrong. I understand you can just run them over. But still, why build it in the damn road anyways? Now everybody's contained into that box. So I'm just going to watch what happens. I'm just going to see it happens because I know it's about to happen any second now. The enemy's now pushing forward because they're throwing a lot of grenades. So uh, any second now, there's definitely going to be a grenade landing in that box, destroying everybody that's in there. So I'm going to hang back. Oh, yeah, you can, you can see it coming up now. All the grenades are being spammed all over the place. There goes one right there that was very close. <laughs> uh, these false uh, senses of security. I want to hang back a little bit and uh, let's go ahead and throw on, turn off the overlay so we can watch and see what happens. Oh, there we go. What did I tell you? What did I, <laughs> we, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. 
Look at that. And they just shot, they tossed another one in there. That's the best place to throw your grenades. Whenever you see somebody foolish enough to build a little box like that, let them build it. Let them think it's safe. Let them invest themselves into a box like that. Look at that, there's another one. Let them think that that's the safe place for them all to pile up and shoot. And then you just chuck a few grenades in there and kill them all. It's so simple. I don't, I don't know how people haven't figured it out yet. I guess some of these guys are fairly new and it seems like a good technique to do that. But really, it, it just isn't. It just isn't. These pill boxes as well. That one's doing a halfway decent job, but they're gassing it out. Holy smokes. And they're building more pill boxes. Oh wow, whoever that was, he is a wreck city. Yeah. I wouldn't build any more pill boxes out there. That's already a waste. Oh, see, and he's <laughs> Okay, so that uh that C V is about to go down if it's not disabled already. Yeah, the war's shaping up pretty good here. I mean, there's a lot of action going on. Now, see, these pillboxes, however, over here with their backs against the wall, that can be an effective technique right there. Because, see, nothing can get behind them. So that's that's pretty good. That's a nice use of them. I wouldn't put them so close together. I'd spread them out so you can fully use that cone. You know, just stacking for them right in front of each other. Eh. Pillboxes are good and bottlenecks and they also help to stop okay so we got some action going around over here as well all right yeah so a defense we got a couple guys engaging on this end down this side here yeah pillboxes are great for stopping the memers the people who like to run around with bayonets and you know just charge around really quickly do uh um no ammo or anything in their kit so they have maximum movement speed and they can bayonet like five or six people in a cluster pillboxes are great for that because they have that rapid fire and once they hit you you're screwed you're pretty you're pretty much done for if you get stunned in the line of sight of a pillbox you're dead because that thing is gonna mow you down with like even though it'll only take about 10 bullets to kill you that thing will shoot about 200 bullets so <laughs> you're not going anywhere after that starts shooting and look at that they're still building it up and look at that he's even put a divider like a full-blown divider in there <laughs> look at the gas uh, still building that up i like that 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 guy's determined he's just Determined to get everybody killed in there. Waste those resources, Buckaroo. You put them in there. Now, see, simple structures, whenever you're moving with sandbags, it's good to be fairly mobile. You want something you can hide behind, attack from, but also, you know, move from position to position. Sort of wall bounce, if you will. You know, you want to sort of stagger. Oh, here we go. Here we go. He's going to knock it all down, baby. Boom! Look at that. One truck. One man just sacrificed himself to take out all those uh, pretty... So all, all those defenses just away. Gone. Your pretty little structure is now gone. One truck. Now, of course, the uh, sandbags don't cost that much. Don't get me wrong, but because we don't have infinite resources anymore, like you don't, you don't, well, technically they are infinite, but, uh, they're, they're not like they used to be where it is. Everything just respawned immediately. So, uh, resources should be spent more wisely and, ho and look, he's just, be come on. I, I have to go talk to this guy. I have to go talk to this guy. Dude, I have, you know, I can't just sit by and watch that. I really need to know at least what he's thinking. I have to know. So we're going to go down there and talk to this guy. Major Tom. Major Tom. Mm. Exactly. What, uh, could you give me a little insight into why you're rebuilding that? Yeah, it's blocking my toolbox. Actually, I would prefer it down. I mean, we, we just... All right. First of all, don't build in the road. Secondly, that's just a goal for people to throw grenades in. 
And as you just seen, one truck will knock all of that down. You're just wasting team resources. Oh, so you're doing it? I disagree. Lost the point, Tom. Keep building. It's blocking my field of fire. <laughs> oh, oh, so... Okay, I got you. So he he's Tom, thinking Tom, Tom. that they're wasting them all. Tom, build, uh, build, uh, a storage box in front there first, so the truck can't run. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> What's going to happen again? I'm just keeping them busy. <laughs> I got 10 more okay. boxes of ammo for you. So rather than use those defenses in a better manner, you're just spending them here because it's fun. And again, like this pillbox, how much work is it going to get done right here with that wall in front of it? So much work. On top of which, who decided to build pillboxes in the center of the road? Uh-oh, highway shells incoming. Oh, okay, so that's where the Howies are falling. Time to go. Yep. There goes a little bit of that rubber banding right there. I'll just sprint in one direction. Hopefully you might see it again. Okay, so now it's not doing it. Oh, they did it just now. All right, so uh, I'll hang back here a little bit. I'll hop inside this pillbox here. But it's a little, oh, there we go, a little bit more of that jittery nonsense there. All right, so we'll try to get another, I'll get a few more images of the war up here, and then we're going to go ahead and call it a day, because, uh, <sighs> I got to tell you. And again with the pillboxes. And they're so close. So much resources. You throw down a couple foxes and you put two men in that area to man that area. And it'll be so much more effective. They can bounce in between defenses and monitor that entire area. Oh, wait a minute. Where am I? I want to make sure I'm nice and far. But, oh, okay. So, yeah, I am pretty far away. So, the Howie's incoming. They're taking down. Uh, that We were trying to build the Howie in that area. So, they're going to knock that down. Uh, a couple men got hit there. That CV is pretty much down. Gonna have to get some BMATs over there to repair that. Just enter the fuck hole, man. And there Did goes the man. gas. Tons and tons of gas. Nobody speaks your language. All right. All right, so it looks like we're retaliating with the gas. Got a soldier over here throwing out a marker. All right, disrupting some building plans going on over there. We got a guy hiding in the bush. There we go. Nice push going on over there. He's taking a nice crouch position to get some better accuracy out of that weapon. In the combat, in the uh, combat briefing too, I'm going to be also discussing that the uh, crouch prone situation, yep. all of that. Uh, in the first, oh, out. okay, so that guy right there, he's down. Uh, I don't see any medics. Oh, this guy in this road's going down next. Yep. I don't see any medics. We got nice coverage out there in the field. Okay, so I can turn down some of that gamma now. Got them on I don't like it so bright during the daytime. Yeah, sure, but I got a bunch of shells. That's all. So what I'm going to do yeah, first, I'm going to turn I'll down this gamma. Bring him over to this other house over here. All right. Apply that, and yeah, then I'll turn they got destroyed. down the... There we go. All right. So now let's go over here and see what we can see on the battlefield. I'll just move up the right here. Hopefully I can get a good eye on things. We got another pillbox over there. I'll try to get over there. How much gas? Uh, oh, so I haven't been affected by any gas yet. But I know how he's going to be spamming. Oh, I was going to go to that defense. But I'll hang back. This one will do just fine for now, I suppose. All right, let's turn off the overlay and just see what we got going on here. We're knocking down a uh, tower. See another collie coming around the ends there. We got enemies moving. Okay. So they're spreading out. 
Oh, that collie's injured. He's bleeding out. Let's see if he's going to get some med. Oh, he might make it. Yep, he made it back to safety. Who knows if he'll actually be healed. Okay, let's see what's happening here. He's looking for medical attention. <laughs> Nobody decided to... Oh, there we go. There we go. Somebody's healing him up. All right, so that's where you want to put your bombs at right there. That's a medic right there. So you want to kill him. Yeah. Uh, heads up for anybody who was uh, wanting uniforms. If that guy was marked as a medic on the field, he'd be the first one dead. <laughs> for anybody who wanted to wear uniforms in this game, that's how it works. When you find a medic, you kill him first. Because <laughs> uh, it makes sense, right? That's the guy that's going to be healing everybody. I want you to think about it. If you're an expert player... And you are fighting against a bunch of mediocre uh, players. And think about it. You, you, you're you fighting this one mediocre guy. And you could have killed him three or four times by now. But he keeps coming back so quickly for some reason. Obviously, there's a medic behind helping him gain more experience healing him. So he can keep returning to battle. You kill that medic. Now that mediocre player is on his own. All right, so we got eyes in down here. Nice. Oh, that guy's taking a hit. There we go. He's down. All right, the battle's going pretty good. Oh, there we go. We got the bayonetta. He's going in, baby. He's got the bayonet. Oh, they got him. They got him. Very good. That was very good. All right, more Howie incoming. Ooh, look at that. Oh, right in the center. Right in the center. And uh, this is me right here in this little pillbox. So I'm probably going to have to get the hell out of here pretty soon. Let's turn the overlay back on because when it's time to go, we ain't wasting any time. All right, I'm going to head on over there to the southeast so I can get another. I want to get some uh, better view out there. So, jeez, uh, look at all this barbed wire. Oh, let me just pick this up because this, I mean, seriously, who are you stopping? The enemy or us? Really? Who are you stopping here with all this? You're keeping us from moving out in this area. You're just closing the entire thing off with barbed wire like that. It's crazy. All right. So what I want to do is I want to get out here and uh, hop in this pillbox right here. And they don't have any defenses over here. So I don't want to just wander out. Look at all those bags. Take a quick peek around this end here. I don't see anything out there. So I'm going to angle around. Ah, there we go. We got an enemy and some defenses out there. He's firing in. Volk's taking some hit. He's bleeding out. There we go. Applying that bandage. Excellent. Excellent. Stop the bleeding. Now he can make his way back to a uh, friendly who's got a first aid kit. Hopefully there's a medic, somebody that sees that he's injured and can take good care of him. Oh, there we go. He dropped his trauma. We got a medic on him right there. Very good. That's nice. So we got some teamwork going on down there. Got an enemy over here in the defense. Oh, this man is taking a hit. He's crouched. Determined. Oh, he's down. Let's see if they get some cover fire. All right. How he's putting some work in for cover. Medic, go ahead and healing him up right there. He's got his gun up. Very good. Okay, so he's doing the damn thing. Let's turn the overlay off so we can get a cleaner view here. Wow, this is actually going very well now. I don't see any more enemies out. Oh, there we go. That enemy is still crouching on that defense over there. So you see, with the foxhole, even though it had... Oh, they, they're, see, they're throwing down more foxies over here. So they're spreading their defenses out more, which is good. You know, putting some distance in between them. I'd, I'd personally put a little bit more distance in between that. Just because these things have a pretty good cone that they can cover. You want to cover as much distance as possible. And defenses are meant to be manned. You don't just leave them out there hoping they'll fight the war for you. So you, what you do is you split your men up into squads. And you have squads take different areas. And that way as the enemy pushes in that area. Oh, here we go. We got an injured man running back here. Can he make it? Let's see. Let, can he make it? Oh, he has made it. He has made it. We got another injured man here. He's taking some hits. Rolling in. Reinforcements coming in. Yeah, like I was saying before, once you split your men in squads, 
they can cover areas pretty well. You don't rely on the defenses to fight the war for you. Don't get me wrong. Like you see just just now, that defense did just take that man down. But once you realize enemies are in that area, you send a squad over there to uh, reinforce the area. Because uh, without men actually manning the defenses, you can see the concentrated fire happening right now on that defense. It's going to go down in no time. Yeah. It's going to go down in no time. And all you need is basic rifles to take them things down. Look at that. It just went down. Yeah. So they don't have the men stretched out right now. And I bet they're all grouped up over here somewhere. Yeah. Here we go. So what I do in a situation like this. I spread. Depending on how much men you got, of course. I break them down into four man squads. A medic. Two riflemen and an engineer. And you send them out in that area. Hopefully everybody will still have a weapon on them. Because, I mean, when it's time to shoot, everybody's going to need to shoot. Except for the medic. You want your medic to be hanging back. But, uh, yeah. You just, like, see this man in his defense here? He can at least engage them. Kind of keep him back. But there aren't enough men to really back him up right now. So he... Uh, He's probably not going to last too long, but look at that. He just put a shot in on that guy over there. He can bail. Probably bounce to a new defense. See that? So uh, that defense is hidden in the fog of war. That's why I can't see it. But, uh, oh, yeah. So they're now putting concentrated fire on that defense. It's going down. This is a nice squad over here working. Too many of them in that one area, but I'd spread them out a little bit more. You know, four man squads, send them out across the area to take that way you can take more ground more effectively and uh, make sure you got a medic in each squad. Don't waste any uh, resources that you don't have to. Oh, here we go. Got some aid there. We got a bayonetter coming in. He's already been stunned. He's bleeding out and he is down. There we go. We got another man down over here. To help, all right, he's putting pressure on the wound, but he released because the medic is nearby. I would still hold that pressure until the medic got him up. And it's best to go back and get healed. You don't want to see he just returned to battle without being healed. So he's going to get shot once and die. Yeah. Without being healed after you've been revived, you get shot once, you are dead. You don't go into critical state anymore. You just die instantly. All right, so we got a medic. Oh, nope, he's already dead. Can't help him. All right, more concentrated fire. Must be a defense over there somewhere. Yeah, he's taking down a foxhole. Yep, there it goes. It's down. All right, the enemy's feeling pressure now. Oh. Grenade! <laughs> That was a beautiful grenade throw. See, that's that's how you use grenades right there. I like that. That's how you use grenades. There goes the second one in there. Tearing them up. That's a beautiful use of grenades right there. Rather than just running in, spamming them all over the place, man. It's really all right. So we got another nade coming out right here. Some gas. He's going to go ahead and provide some cover. Clear out that camp. There we go. Gas grenades are great for that kind of thing. You know, when you got a bunch of campers in a nice area that they're applying some serious pressure to you, you chuck some gas in there and that'll clear out the whole zone. More gas going out there, but I don't know how effective that was. Uh, most of the soldiers there are hidden in the fog of war for me. There we go. Right in their little camp zone. Clearing them out, baby. That gas is doing work. That is nice. That's very nice. You got some engineers over here working, trying to restore some of those defenses so that a man can get over there and do some actual work. Yeah, the Collies, I mean, they're putting up a hell of a fight. It's it's looking like a losing war. They only got a fort over there, and let's, uh, let's bring the overlay back over. So, uh, they've only got the forts down there. I don't know how much logistics they got coming in. Uh, they do got a refinery here, so they can be bringing in some pretty good resources into this map area right here from this direction. From uh, what, what map is this? Uh, Alduit's Bite. Uh, uh, yeah, Bite. I was thinking Blight, but Bite. I guess that's what that is. Yeah. 
So that's where they're going to have to bring in their resources. I don't see any other... Ooh, I don't think they're bringing them back from uh, Shackle Chasm. No, I don't think they're bringing them from way back there. But you can see the fight here, man. Look at that. Lots of good action going on down here. Let's see how long I've been recording for. Ooh, 40 minutes. Wow. All right. So this is going to be a long video. I'll capture a little bit more here. And then we'll call this a video. Yeah, we'll call it a video. Oh, we see some Kali action moving up here. Oh, we got a Kali coming in. Let's see what's going to happen. That's, uh, oh, he's hidden in the fog of war. Looks like they may have engaged him. I didn't see his rifle go off yet. There we go. There's his rifle going off in the smoke there. He may be down. Yeah, he may be down. All right, let's reposition so we can get better eyes out there. This looks like a good spot to reposition to. Watch a Howie shell lands right on my forehead any minute now. Because it's the perfect thing to blow up. All right, so we got, uh, what is that, smoke going on over there? Threw down some smoke. Now see, if I were playing seriously, what I'd be doing right now is in an op chat and I'd be giving coordinates of all the enemies that I could see to help the men spread out and better attack. But that's just with people that I know will actually work. See, so they cleared out that entire camp. That was an effective use of gas right there. Wardens were using this area to uh, station, and now with all that gas in that area, uh, that camp is now cleared out. There's, there's no way you're going to use that as a defense right now, and it's completely poisoned. Let's see uh, what's happening here. You know what I'd like to see with, with the gas? I'd like to see more duration with the gas so it'll keep the area uh, poisoned for longer. But at the same time, I would not want gas spam. So if, say for instance, you made it to where a person could only throw like maybe two gas grenades within a 10 minute span or something so you can cut down on the spam, the gas will be used more effectively, like it covered that area for longer giving you more time to actually reposition your men and assault that area from the outside. And it forced you to, you know, you really better use that gas sparingly because you got 10 minutes in between when you can throw the next uh, two grenades or whatever. Oh, they're building a box over there. So normally when you see engineers building a box, that usually means they're going to be bringing in more supplies and they're also recovering supplies off the field. So you know that there's some frugal, uh, war usage going on over there. They're recovering from the enemy to uh, help with their own push. So that's an area I'd be watching out for, watching them build that box over there. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see a uh, large amount of enemy. Wait a minute, where'd that hit? Oh, okay, so this, I would not I would not waste Howie shells on that because you're not destroying anything. I, I would not be sending Howie shell in that area. Howie isn't used for infantry. That is an effective use of smoke over there though take away the sight of the enemy and uh the so i'm thinking the collies are the ones throwing that smoke over there let me just get into a better position it's probably kind of hard for me to see anything right there ah oh, we got a foxy right over here which is going to probably be how we do any second now Ooh, look at that <laughs> yeah see where those boxes are right there definitely blow that up yep definitely blow that up and I know that that guy with the HMG is trying to get in here, but I don't care. He's going to have to do his own thing. I'm reporting. Reporting is vital. We're <laughs> oh, there we go. We got some attacks coming in. Ooh, it's kind of ugly over here. Oh, man, that guy's taking the hit. He's running away. Yep, he didn't have support. There's no medics in this area, so you better not take too many hits over there. All right, here we go. We got a guy crouching, making his way in. Nice brave collie over there. 
They're putting up a radio tower. Yeah, so this is definitely the area you want to watch. They're trying to get the flank in on us. And uh, if they come around too far, it's going to be they're going to spread the war out. You, you know, you see how fluid it is. They can actually go in any direction around you and then start flanking in. Oh, he DC'd. That call he DC'd, so... Uh, Servers are probably pretty weak. He's probably from someplace far away. He DC'd and now they're about to put the... Well, they shot him a couple times. How come he didn't die? There we go. Now he's down. All right. Taking on that defense there. They're trying to move their way up to the structure. So that way they can fight from that structure. Because you can see it's a very effective area to fight from. Are those our Howie shells going out toward them? I mean, why are we just... I, I would not be using the Howie like that. I'd be trying to hit that forward if any damn thing. You got a guy with some binos. He can give you as much uh, coordinates as possible to hit that fort. That's what you want to be hitting with that Howie. Because once you take down the fort, the defenses go offline. And man, I mean, it's just game over at that point. Ooh, more gas uses over there. So they're really trying to get that position right there. Very nice. Collie's doing good work over there. I'm going to have to reposition so I can get better eyes on the situation. So much fog of war out there from where I am now. I don't know why. I mean. All right, so let's uh, pop out of here and try to get some better eyes on the situation. Oh, man. Massive hit with the gas massive hit all right so they're pushing back very good they're trying to contain the situation very good i'm just gonna sort of pan around here scrubbing the area okay so we got got a little action happening over here somewhere am i bleeding oh okay all right so the war definitely is spreading out pretty good here Looks like a collie over there. There we go. Lots of action coming in on that middle. Oh, yeah. They've already secured it. And they're gassing the area behind. Time for me to move. <laughs> oh, my God. Serious rubber banding. Time to go. And now, if you're fighting in front of this area, these pillboxes are going to mow you all down. So it's just bad engineering right there. Well, it's good if you're fighting behind it, but if you're fighting in front of it, you're going to get you're going to get creamed by your own defenses. So the collies are uh, using gas and we are trapped by our own barbed wire here. I'm just going to make my way over into this region. I know that we're going to get hit with Howard surrounds. That's why I don't want to fight here. So I'm just going to. And for some reason, somebody thinks it's a good idea to put wall up now. I don't know why. Yeah, containing yourself and your own movement in a war is never a good idea. You want to contain the enemy, not yourself. Like building wall here, uh, especially this zigzag janky nonsense. I mean, literally, that's just. Hmm. I feel very badly for all the guys who worked hard doing Lodgy all night. I really do. All right, so uh, yeah, the collars have now taken quite a bit of ground over here. I'm betting gas is gonna fall in on that storm commando any second now. All right, so we got a HMG in the bush there. All right, so to the right here, the war it hasn't really spread out too much. All right. Oh, man, Cowboy just got hit. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they are taking the war. There we go. Yeah, they're... so the Collies, wow, see that? They're using foxholes so they can, they can actually get more defenses down. They're omnidirectional. And you can see that they're actually bringing their way back up into this fight. They're spreading their men out a little bit more. 
they're actually doing a really good job of staying in this fight. Because, I mean, you'd think we'd have the upper hand and we'd be taking them out right about now. But uh, our engineers are clearly not as bright. You can, Yep, look at that. They're pushing back on this pretty heavy here. This is going to be interesting. I, when I come back on later on today, I'm definitely going to want to revisit this area if available. Oh, yeah, they're taking that flank heavy. Oh, this is going to get ugly, but I've got to get ready for work. So <laughs> we're going to call this a day. I'm going to go drop these binos off to somebody who can use them and uh, log off. Let me first turn my VoIP on. I can speak with somebody who uh, probably on the Howard's shell or something. I mean, on the Howard's so that can use these uh, binos. But I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, war summary. I'll catch you guys in the next video.